Recently, I got a question about what type of antenna I use and about coaxes. And we actually get that question all the time about like what antenna would we recommend and details about coax and stuff. Hi, I'm Mike, N4FFF. And I'm Becky, N4BKY. And if you're new here, we do parks on the air, summits on the air, and just portable radio in general. And we've tried lots of different kinds of antennas. And we're gonna share a little bit of our experience on antennas, uh, what bands to use, decisions to make uh, tuners or not, and even antenna analyzers. And for beginners, what all that means and if you need it. Yeah, we're gonna boil it down to be as simple as possible. So one of the first things that you're gonna to wanna to decide and that we decided is whether or not you wanna use a tuner. And what does that mean? <laughs> so in general, to be able to keep your radio happy, um, you probably recall that you have to have a signal to noise ratio that's under a certain amount, normally about three to one to make your radio happy. And so we like to use these little QRP radios uh, so that we can be able to be portable, bring them anywhere and things like that. And they normally don't have a tuner in them. And so we don't wanna bring an extra tuner. So we look for antennas that don't require a tuner. Gotcha. So if our radios don't have a tuner, we just need the radio and an antenna that works with it. Right. And so what the, the tuner doesn't make the antenna any more efficient or effective with your power. That just makes it so that your radio is a little bit more happy. So by choosing not to use an ant uh, antenna tuner, we also pick antennas that are efficient. With these Q tiny little QRP radios, we want to make the bet most out of all the watts that we've got. And so efficient antennas allow us to do that first. So if you don't have an efficient antenna, that means even if this is a five watt radio, you might be wasting some and you're only putting out three watts. Right, every little watt counts with these. <laughs> so first we need to talk about the types of antennas. So we're gonna talk about dipole antennas, quarter wave vertical antennas and end up talking about infinite half waves. These are all efficient types of antennas. There are a ton of different types of antennas. We're just gonna, we've experimented with a ton and we'll go over the ones we have experience with and tell you what we've learned. But the best antenna that you can use is the one that you actually use. Right. So uh, whatever's practical for you, whatever you have handy, don't overcomplicate it. First, a dipole. You probably remember when you're studying for the license exam that a dipole antenna um, is one of the most efficient antennas that you can, you can you can get and you can't beat that. This is an antenna from Soda Beams and it makes putting up a dipole portable about as easy as you can do. I'll link a video with a lot more details on this antenna from Cliff with QRP School uh, who taught me about it initially. It comes on three different wire winders which makes it about as easy as possible but it's still pretty big and takes a while to set up. Yeah, I think for us, putting this portable is a little bit more difficult. So a dipole is super efficient, but it does take a little more work to set up and take down. We're not really going to cover exactly what a dipole is versus the others. That's for an in-depth video. We're just kind of going through the various antennas that you could choose and what we like. The next category of antennas that is also very efficient and famous is the quarter wave vertical. And it's just like it sounds. It is a quarter wavelength of whatever frequency you want to use it in. And this is a 17 foot whip antenna, which is about a quarter wave wavelength for 20 meters. So you use these on, on, on 20 meters. One of the ones that's very well known is a Chelligan 750. We don't have that, but we do have this one that we got from AliExpress. It includes this ground spike. And basically the way that it works is you have a quarter wavelength of whatever frequency you're trying to use as the radiating element that goes up in the air. And then you have a ground plane at the bottom. This comes in really handy if you wanna be able to operate from the beach because uh, if you've heard of the saltwater magic, part of the saltwater magic is the fact that the saltwater makes a fantastic ground plane. So you can basically harness that by using uh, a vertical antenna. And one of the downsides is, is, is it's a little bit larger, so to kind of take it portable with a giant spike is not quite as easy, but if we're at the beach, definitely we're taking this along. But if we are backpacking, we might bring, bring this quarter wave vertical. If you're looking for the cheapest antenna possible, this is what you would probably go with. You really need just this one little adapter that you can get off of Amazon, no soldering required. You just cut wire to be able to make the antenna and you're good to go. Um, I'll link a video with more details on how to build one of these uh, below, but basically you have that quarter wavelength of, of for whatever band you want to use it on as the radiating element that goes up in the air, and then you have wires that you use as your radials for your ground plane, and you're good to go. And this fits in nicely into our backpack. Yeah. And we're going to talk about the cutting of the wire and how long in a minute. The next type of antenna we're going to talk about are our new favorite antennas, which is the end-fed half waves. 
So for a long time we didn't use these because we were striving to use very efficient antennas that don't require a tuner. And even though the, these don't require a tuner, they do require a, a matching transformer that's built into each one. Um, and just due to ignorance, I didn't realize that at the beginning. These are a half of a wavelength, um, hence the in-fed half wave. The half wave part, it's a half of a wavelength of whatever band you're trying to use. Um, and then the end fed means you're, you're feeding it and connecting to the end of it. So that's why you need that transformer. Also, these type of antennas work on multiple different bands because they're a half wave. Yeah, so it, let's say you cut one of these for 40 meters. Uh, 20 meters is one of the harmonics because it's a even uh, divisible of the 40 meters. And so it works on 40 meters, 20 meters, and then 10 meters. And if you happen to cut it for 20 meters, like this one is, it'll work on 20 meters and 10 meters. So uh, let's talk about these particular ones in, in general. So this one's from Xtenna. Uh, it's a great one because of the fact that it comes pre-built. You don't have to do any soldering. You just have to cut the wire, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And it comes with a switch on it um, to be able to switch between 49 to 1, 56 to 1, and 60, 64 to 1. If you don't know what all that means, basically you just switch this toggle switch after you get set up and see whichever one might give you a little bit of an edge in terms of the match. Yeah, and by matching you mean the SWR. Right. Gotcha. So this little one is the K6 ARK NFED half wave, which actually has a process board and a toroid built right into this little teeny piece right here. Who built that? I did. <laughs> and again, this is going to plug right into your radio, which is a fun part about this one. It does not require the coax, whereas this one does. But the reason we love in-fed half waves and why they've become our go-to is how easy they are to set up. So now that we've done a lot of parks on the air and some summits on the air and lots of portable operations, it just we really like to be able to get up and have, get everything up and going and have fun uh, as soon as possible. And with an in-fed half wave, we really just have to get one side up uh, in the air somehow and one side connected to the radio. And so like Becky was saying, this one in particular doesn't require coax. Technically speaking, your coax with an in-fed half wave normally acts as your counterpoise or your ground plane for the other half of the antenna. But especially on QRP with the radios that we use, we've just found that it doesn't matter. Uh, it, do it doesn't matter, some kind of magic. And so the K6ARK that Becky Belt has been our go-to favorite. We're excited today to share with y'all that we've been using this one from a Reliance Antenna. Matt with Reliance Antenna has been has been super helpful letting us talk through using this in the same way as the K6 ARK. So it has a little bit more bulk to it, but this can connect directly to your radio. So this side is going to connect directly to your radio, and then you just have to put that side up in the air. These antennas come with uh, wire winders and the antenna itself already kind of prepackaged, put together. You just have to do your tuning and cutting. So Matt said that he's going to start carrying the 20 meter version after getting our feedback on the fact that that's how we normally deploy it. We're going to cover the bands in just a second, but with it cut at 20 meters, it's a nice small package and you can get it up into the air with a really small mast or you know, just any kind of tree branch that you can even reach into. As Becky said, these wire winders are super neat. Uh, he's done a really, really good job. Uh, this particular one has a, a 20 meter section and then it has an extension that you can link to it to be able to get up to go to 40 meters if you have enough space to deploy it for 40 meters. And it comes with the hardware to double back the antenna. We've been really happy with the results so far, just playing with the Reliance uh, InFed Half Wave because uh, Adam's K6 ARK's antenna is often not in stock. This is in stock. It doesn't have any surface mount parts that you have to solder and put together. So if soldering is not your thing, right. you want something to grab and go, this still lets you just have a small package that you can have to just directly connect to your radio. So with all this various antennas, which band should you get and how do you tune it to make sure it's ready? Great question. If you had to pick one band, which would it be? For us, definitely 20 meters. Two reasons, it's the most popular band and for setup, it's quick and easy. So why are all the people on 20 meters? For one reason, it's reliable year-round during the day, which is when most people are, are doing POTA. And because of that, there's a lot of operators on, on POTA. And the second is, it's just very, very convenient for setup. Bands like 40 meters require a lot more space, and 20 meters gets you, gives you a sweet spot of reliability and the, a reasonable sized antenna. Especially if you're going portable like us. But that's definitely not to say that 20 meters is the only band. People do portable operations and POTA on all the bands. 
Right. And if you just got your license and you're a technician, you don't really have access to 20 meters. So 40 meters and 10 meters are also great options. Yeah, 40 meters is great in the early morning and the evening and sometimes during the winter. And then also 10 meters, we've had fantastic luck with uh, DX to other countries on, yeah. on 10 meters. So other bands are fun to play with for totally different reasons. But if you have to pick just one band, I'd pick 20 meters uh, and uh, an, an antenna like this. So let's say you just got your NFED half wave. What should you do to make sure it's tuned right to get on the air? So uh, we have this, it's a nano VNA. We'll link to it in the description below, along with a video that shows a quick and simple way to be able to use it just as an antenna analyzer. So as a simple ant antenna analyzer, you're gonna end up with a graph and the graph's gonna show you the, the SWR over the frequency range and you're gonna basically gonna get a dip where it is most resonant at. So you're basically looking for that low dip to be right where you're gonna be able to use it. So let's say that you are CW operators like us, you want that dip to be in the lower portion of the band. If you do voice, you want it to be longer. And that's where the Reliance antennas uh, uh, extra hardware comes in really handy. It allows you to double back the antenna without cutting it so you can use something like this to be able to check the SWR and then if you want to be able to use it on the voice portion instead you just fold back a little bit more of the antenna and it's not a, port, a permanent change. Right. Investing in one of these is a slam dunk for us. I got this many many years ago and wondered whether or not I would use it. We use it all the time for either spot checking and it's small enough we can fit it into our portable backpack um, or whenever we're building antennas. When you were actually building the antenna, we basically cut it a little bit longer than we need and then we very carefully fold it back or trim it back. When you fold it back, it's gonna make less of a difference for the same amount that you fold back as trimming it, so it's not a 100% a, one-to-one. One of the biggest tips is to measure the SWR twice, use your antenna analyzer and cut once. We found out that the hard way, we cut too much and we were outside of the CW band range. No matter who I got an antenna from, I think I would want them to, to have it a little bit long and then do the final tuning myself. But if you don't have one of these and you do have an Elmer or a friend that can uh, measure, measure and trim an antenna uh, for you, that'd be great. And lastly, we're gonna talk about coaxes and connectors. We're gonna talk about the different types of coax, what kind of connectors that we use for portable use and some of our recommendations. And when you're thinking about coax, the primary thing to think about, I believe, is just thinking about the amount of loss that you have from the coax. With each different kind of coax cable, you're gonna have different advantages and disadvantages, but primarily it's gonna be about how much loss you have per foot. And so with HF radio, with the lower frequencies of HF, you have less loss than you do with like a handy talkie or something like that in UHF or VHF, but it's still a concern. And when you're talking about loss, it's important because every little bit is power that you're losing in your signal. Yeah, since most of our portable radios are QRP, we do care about how much power we're going to lose. So we don't want to lose any that we don't have to due to the coax cable itself. So on the screen now is a chart of some of the very common kinds of cables, and we're going to touch on a couple of them. Uh, I'm not going to bury the lead. Uh, this is the one that we've landed on. This is a RG8X, and, and it, it is flexible. Um, it's not the most flexible kind of cable, but it's flexible enough to be able to wrap up. And this has a uh, relatively low loss, definitely low enough loss that we really don't have to w worry about it. We're not losing very much at QRP levels. This coax is an RJ316, and it is really super flexible, easy to take portable, but there is more loss in this one. So we tend to go with this one here. Yeah. So if, if weight and portability is the ultimate factor, this one might win over. But for us, this isn't that big of a deal to bring um, with us and uh, it's a good happy medium. Also RJ58, which is one of the most popular ones. It's a little bit more flexible than this and kind of very, very, very similar. And then the last consideration is where you get it from. So several people have bought multiple different uh, coax cables and if you have the ability to be able to actually measure the loss, that would be great, but we don't. And if you get something from Amazon like this one or something from eBay, it can be questionable. There are pe people who've gotten the exact same kind of cable and found that the results from the cables that they got were not very stellar. So you can get one from a reputable brand. We have had great luck with this one. We don't have the ability to be able to measure it, but we'll leave it in the description below. Uh, it's just from what we can tell, it's a, it's, it, it's out, it outperforms that one and we think it's doing the job good. You mentioned earlier that these are measured kind of in loss per foot. So what's the best option? 
it's definitely a personal choice but this one's 25 feet so knowing that it's lost per foot 25 feet gives us a lot of flexibility to figure out where we want to be compared to where we want the antenna to be like you mentioned uh, you'll be able to get the antenna further away from a camper um, it gives us that kind of flexibility but not so long that we've got a ton and ton of ton of loss but what's the best length possible zero feet we've had a ton of luck with our k6 ark trip plug directly into the radio so there's no coax loss at all or the reliance antenna uh, that we've been using the last week or so we've had fantastic results with that so far too the advantage of having no coax is you have no extra loss and the disadvantage is that you have to be exactly at the right spot away from the radio. So we normally put the antenna up first and then we set up our little portable table exactly at the spot that we need it. So driving it all home, what would we tell somebody just getting into radio? In photography, they say, what's the best camera? It's the one that you have with you. And I would say the same thing for antennas. Uh, as long as you can find an antenna that seems like it's gonna suit you and you use it, that's the best option. So if I was starting over from scratch, I think I would start exactly how I actually did. Uh, for just a couple of bucks, you can get an adapter and some wire, cut your own antenna, get a, a coax cable like this 25 foot one. You're almost for sure gonna need a coax cable at some point in time and you're good to go. Works great at the beach on a pole, works great in the forest on a, on a tree branch. Um, uh, very, very versatile. And after maybe you get a little more experience or you wanna try something else, then maybe go to the end-fed half wave where you're gonna get it. You might need the antenna analyzer to help you cut it and tune it to the right frequency, but it's super portable and super easy to get up and get on the air. Like we said before, if we had to pick one band, if you're, if you're a general or above, go with 20 meters. Yeah. Um, and if you're a technician, 40 meters or 10. We really hope you found this video about antennas helpful. And if you have any further questions or you felt like we missed something, please leave a comment below and we will get to it. Yeah, maybe make a video about it. And so if you haven't subscribed, uh, it's a great way to be able to support us. That doesn't cost you anything at all. And thank you so much to all of our Duo Crew supporters who have given, given to us on Buy Me A Coffee. Uh, very helpful. The names are on the screen now. Yep, we really appreciate your support and it allows us to continue doing videos like these as well as POTA activations, which we're about to do. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for listening to us ramble about antennas and stuff like that. Thank you for every time you come with us on a POTA activation. We really appreciate the fact that you're here. Yes, and thank you for your comments and your emails and your stories. It really does inspire us to keep going and keep doing this. 73, 72. Psh. That's a wrap. Hi, I'm Mike, N4FFF. <laughs> <laughs> so we're soupy. We're soupy. Soupy? We're soupy. We're soupy, happy. <laughs> <laughs>